Elon Musk's personal beef with Jeff Bezos just got real. Ever since NASA awarded SpaceX with the Human Landing Systems, or HLS, contract worth $2.9 billion, the two companies have been at each other's throats. In their latest online feud, Musk went onto his Twitter to aggressively mock Blue Origin's proposed aircraft, the Moonlander, as not being capable of going toe to toe with SpaceX's Starship. This all started with a tweet on August 12th by Christian Davenport, a scientific reporter for the Washington Post. He was tweeting on Blue Origin's statement on losing out on the HLS contract. A Blue Origin spokesperson I spoke with today left open the possibility of taking the HLS fight to the Court of Federal Claims, and Bob Smith said in a statement to the Post that BO is hopeful that NASA will take advantage of our offer to waive $2 billion in development fees. To which Musk ironically responded, somehow this wasn't convincing. Along with this picture of an early mock-up of the Blue Origin's moon lander that honestly looks a bit like a deflated balloon. Talk about a low blow. You see, ever since SpaceX was awarded the HLS contract, Blue Origin's been fighting hard to force itself into NASA's future plans to send astronauts to the moon. In fact, Bezos has forked out huge amounts of money lobbying for NASA contracts and protesting the US Government Accountability Office for ruling in favor of SpaceX. He's gone as far as offering NASA a $2 billion discount just last month. According to Blue Origin, the Starship is an unsafe, bulky, and inefficient option to send astronauts to the moon. Earlier in August, the company even claimed that it would take Musk more than 16 Starship launches just to get a single rocket-fueled crew all the way to the moon, a statement that Musk completely disagrees with. In a harsh response, Musk even tweeted, if lobbying and lawyers could get you to orbit, Bezos would be on Pluto right now. Classic Elon. But Bezos' aggression is very similar to how Musk in 2004 pushed for the rapid growth of SpaceX to land lucrative contracts. Back in 2004, Kistler Aerospace was awarded a $227 million contract by NASA to finalize the development of its K-1 rocket. The rocket was to be used to deliver supplies to the International Space Station. According to reports at the time, the company justified its award for the contract based on the fact that no other U.S. company had a launch vehicle on the verge of completion. By the time NASA awarded them the contract, Kistler claimed that they had completed about 75% of their K-1 rocket. They'd even invested more than $600 million in the past 10 years. But when Musk found out about the contract, he wasn't happy. And even though SpaceX was only two years old at the time and wouldn't make its first Falcon 1 launch attempt until 2006, he felt that Kistler had been awarded the contract on grounds of favoritism. At the time, Kistler's CEO was George Muller, one of the leaders of the Apollo program and a close associate of NASA's space programs. Musk felt that SpaceX wasn't given a fair platform to compete for the contract. He protested this case to the Government Accountability Office, who ruled in favor of SpaceX. NASA was then forced to pull the contract from Kistler and create a new process known as the Commercial Orbital Transportation Service, or COTS, where private commercial companies compete for contracts to deliver crew and cargo to the ISS. In the past, SpaceX themselves has legally challenged how contracts are awarded, so it wouldn't be fair to say that Blue Origin is the only space company that would fight hard for a contract. SpaceX eventually won one of those contracts in 2006, and it helped the company get the much needed funding to cement its financial success in the aerospace industry. Since then, SpaceX has been working around the clock flying cargo and supplies to the International Space Station, and most recently, astronauts, thereby overcoming the negative flurry of comments that human spaceflight would never make its way to the private sector. It's no secret that Blue Origin wants to go in the same direction as SpaceX, with the objective of getting a shot at some of the lucrative contracts that Musk's aerospace company keeps getting from NASA. It looks like they'll do whatever it takes, even if it means pulling the same stunt that Musk did to Kistler back in 04. But can such an aggressive strategy work? Well, it worked for SpaceX in the 2000s, but back then, there was no hyper-successful private space company like SpaceX gatekeeping all the contracts. You see, losing the HLS contract to SpaceX comes as a massive blow to the Amazon billionaire, a man that's long been fascinated with the moon and was looking forward to becoming part of the journey to take us back there. Bezos recalls watching Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong when they landed on the moon. Jeff was just five years old at the time, and it's why he plans to be there to write history. But poor old Bezos can't seem to escape from the shadow of SpaceX. Because let's face it, since 2017, Blue Origin's been pitching its landing system, the Blue Moon, to NASA in a project that has received personal funding from the Amazon boss. But they just can't seem to get the same momentum as SpaceX. However, Bezos is still super confident that Blue Origin's technology could be the fastest way for humanity to get back to the moon, and this time around, potentially stay there. He might be the richest man in the world, but Bezos can only do so much with his personal funding. He needs the assistance of a much larger organization with significant funding for space exploration, an organization like NASA. 
Over the years, it's been no secret that NASA's played a vital role in keeping SpaceX alive. Since 2012, SpaceX has flown the Dragon to the ISS a record 20 times on newer Falcon 9 rockets. They also sent a crewed mission and are prepared to take a second trip sometime in the near future. Blue Origin has a lot of catching up to do here, but that's not the only big money move that SpaceX has made with NASA so far. Since 2007, the company's been working back to back to win lucrative contracts with the space giant, blowing off Blue Origin by a mile. Let's not forget that in 2007, the company acquired the rights to lease Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40. Aside from the anticipated journey to Mars, Elon Musk's other main objective in the aerospace industry is reusability. Musk wants to construct an interplanetary transport system where rockets can be easily reused. And he's clearly miles above his competitors. Presently, more than 50 SpaceX boosters have been returned to Earth to be refurbished for future flights. Musk strongly believes that reusability will bring down the cost of flying people and cargo around orbit significantly. For example, the cost of a Falcon 9 launch is currently at about $60 million, which is much cheaper than other commercial orbital rockets of the same class and payload delivery. Yes, Blue Origin, we're looking at you. NASA understands that delivering astronauts to the moon is no easy feat. It costs time, money, and fuel, a whole lot of each. For example, during the Apollo mission that took place more than half a century ago, the NASA Saturn V rocket weighed a mind-blowing 6.5 million pounds and burned a staggering 20 tons of rocket fuel every second. Decades later, NASA and SpaceX are looking to achieve the same milestone with the Starship rocket. And even though it's going to take a lot of fuel to get there, they're hoping to do so with way less fuel than the Apollo mission. But is it really possible? In fact, Blue Origin has even used this argument to hit back at SpaceX for winning the contract. They claim that SpaceX might need as many as 16 launches just to be able to deliver the Starship, together with its payload, to the moon. As soon as Elon Musk heard this speculation, he wasn't amused. He went on Twitter to correct Blue Origin, boldly stating that 16 flights was highly unlikely. Starship payload to orbit is about 150 tons, so max of 8 to fill 1,200 ton tanks of Lunar Starship. Without flaps and heat shield, Starship is much lighter. Lunar landing legs don't add much, one-sixth of gravity, may only need half full, i.e. four tanker flights. But even if it does take over 16 launches, Musk strongly believes that that won't be a problem for a company like SpaceX. In a follow-up tweet, he went ahead to clarify his stance on why. However, even if it were 16 flights with docking, this is not a problem. SpaceX did more than 16 orbital flights in the first half of 2021, and has docked with Station, much harder than docking with our own ship, over 20 times. Musk might seem confident, but the reality is that launching Starship with a gigantic super heavy rocket will no doubt be one of the most complex projects the company has carried out. Which then begs another question, will astronauts have to wait over half a year in orbit for their ride to the moon to be completely fueled up? Yes, the logistics involved in taking astronauts to the moon are insane. For example, SpaceX's workhorse, the Falcon 9, only requires nine Merlin engines to lift off. On the other hand, the Super Heavy booster by itself will have 32 of the much larger and more powerful Raptor engines for liftoff. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. In fact, the launch for the Super Heavy might not be too far off, as SpaceX recently stacked a Starship prototype on top of the Super Heavy rocket stage for the first time, while preparing for its maiden voyage supposedly taking place sometime this year. If everything goes according to plan, we could see the Starship go into orbit before the end of summer 2021. Only then will SpaceX be able to focus on their next step in the moonshot journey, to create a refueling station through the use of two Starships. In the meantime, it looks like Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin will have to either go to court or sit this one out by the sidelines and just wait, like everyone else.